Hello and welcome to the Show Day Podcast. Today is July 30th, 2019. With four shows taking place last night and two more getting checked off the tour schedule today, the 2019 season it is rapidly coming to a close. Those events last night that provided high competitive intrigue, we saw Blue Devils versus Blue Coats. Once again, we saw some interesting results on the open class side of things. And now tonight, we have two events, one in Annapolis, Maryland, and one in Salem, Virginia. And those are, of course, bound to do the same with that competitive intrigue. We see some more of those battles we've been watching all season. Now tonight, as cores really all file into that mid-Atlantic region. So all that, plus more on today's Show Day podcast. Last night, I said we had four shows. First of those, Drums Across the Tri-State in Charleston, West Virginia. We had the Mandarins, Phantom Regiment, the Academy, Pacific Crest, the Madison Scouts, and the Seattle Cascades performing at this one. When we look at the uh, recap general effect first up, uh, keep your eyes peeled for two specific battles here, and really it's just in a few a few different captions um, or sub-captions, but definitely two things worth watching here. One is Mandarins versus Phantom Regiment, and the other is the Academy versus Pacific Crest. So when we look at general effect, Mandarins, a 34.9, Phantom Regiment, a 34 even. So a big gap between those two after general effect, Mandarins up by 9 tenths. And then when we look at the Academy and Pacific Crest, just two tenths separating them, Academy a 32.9, Pacific Crest a 32.7. Farther down the line, you have Madison a 30.8, and the Seattle Cascades a 27.1 and 6. Moving over to visual, we see Pacific Crest do very well in visual proficiency in that subcaption last night, coming within four tenths of the Mandarins, a core that really um, is doing extremely well in visual and in visual proficiency. In particular, you're thinking they're getting eight, ninth, tenth um, every night kind of thing when we put them on a large scale, when, when we look at all 22 um, at the same place, like at a regional. Pacific Crest jumping up to second there does knock down Phantom Regiment and the Academy. It's two tenths between each of those three cores in that subcaption. Visual analysis, Mandarins win it by three tenths over Phantom Regiment. And in Color Guard, um, we've seen Phantom struggle a little bit here. We see the Mandarins at a 17.5, a good score for them, almost to 18 there. Very good for the Mandarins. Phantom Regiment in second. A whole point back in Color Guard at a 16.5. So even though Phantom does pull sort of close to the Mandarins, especially in visual analysis, uh, the six tenths in visual proficiency and the whole point in Color Guard does not help Phantom Regiment when we look at this visual caption. And one more thing with Color Guard is Pacific Crest. They do best the Academy by three tenths, a 16.2 to a 15.9. Madison in 5th, Seattle Cascades in 6th, and when we look at the overall visual numbers, we have the Mandarins up by 9.5 tenths over Phantom Regiment because of how how big that gap is. We see the Mandarins at 25.9, Phantom at 24.95, Pacific Crest over the Academy in this visual caption, Madison in 5th, and the Seattle Cascades finish 6th. Moving over to music in Charleston, West Virginia, um, looking, well, the big thing here is the Mandarin struggle in music, um, really, like, a lot, they struggle in music, um, and Phantom Regiment is good in music, so, um, we'll see Phantom kind of, um, gain a lot of that margin that the Mandarin's, uh, build up on Phantom in general effect and visual, we see Phantom kind of take some of that away in music, and it's really just both of those factors um, coming together. The fact the Mandarins aren't so good, and the fact that Phantom Regiment is good, just those coming together. So when we look at Brass, you've got Phantom a 17, even Mandarins a 16.8. Not a huge gap, but still Phantom on top. We also see Pacific Crest ahead of the Academy by three tenths in Brass. Music analysis, Mandarins ahead by four tenths over Phantom, and Phantom could close that gap to the Mandarins when we see these cores go head-to-head -head again within the next, 
about week now, um, really, I think Phantom could gain, but you have to, you have to get some of these, uh, captions, like music analysis, where you're within, um, a few tenths of the core you're trying to best. Uh, moving down the line in analysis, a uh, big gap between the Academy and Pacific Crest. Academy all the way up at a 16.9, almost uh, almost to Phantom, at a, it was at a 17 even, just a tenth off. And then Pacific Crest all the way down at a 15.5, so a huge gap, 1.4 there in that music analysis subcaption. In music percussion, we see Phantom... Um, doing very well there, almost 18. We've seen them place as high as ninth in percussion at um, at the regionals, so them doing well in percussion, then you mix that with the Mandarins who have struggled big time in percussion, actually losing to the Madison Scouts here. So you have Phantom at a 17.7, Madison 1.5 back, and then another five tenths back to the Mandarins, so a whole two points separating Phantom and the Mandarins in percussion. And then also the Academy there, um, they fall all the way to fifth in percussion, definitely not really where they'd want to be in that sub-caption, and it's just something we keep seeing from them um, night in, night out. Overall music numbers, you have Phantom on top at a 25.85, Mandarin's a 24.95, so a whole 9 tenths separating the top two in music, with Phantom besting the Mandarin's. Academy in third, Pacific Crest fourth, Madison Scouts in fifth, pulling kind of close to Pacific Crest, closer than the other two captions in Seattle Cascades in sixth. Overall scores, Phantom pulls within a point of the Mandarin's last night. For the first time, maybe all season, I think I'd be right to say that. And we also see Pacific Crest pull kind of close to the Academy at three-tenths after last night. So, second show last night then, Soaring Sounds in Centerville, Ohio. Looking at the recap here, there wasn't a whole lot of competitive stuff going on, except really at the top when we look at the Blue Devils and Blue Coats. Looking in general effect first, Blue Coats a 38-1, Blue Devils a 37-8. Visual, all the subcaptions, all three subcaptions go to the Blue Devils, so they get the overall victory in visual. Small margin, only three tenths, but still a victory nonetheless. Um, so if you look at general effect and visual, you add those numbers together, and um, you get a, a tie after these two captions. So... Um, extremely tight competition as we keep reiterating um, constantly throughout this season. So if it's a tie after general effect and visual, it comes down to music, of course. So looking at music, we've seen the Blue Coats do good in music. We haven't seen them necessarily get to the levels of Crown and Brass or Vanguard and Percussion, but we've seen them do well for where they are. And we've also seen the Blue Devils struggle a little bit. So when we look at the music caption, those things I just said that we've constantly been seeing didn't really show up on the recap too much last night. You look at brass first, you have Blue Devils up by two tenths. They've struggled in brass, and they've also struggled in analysis. They're up by a tenth and a half in music analysis. So really, um, not these scores aren't really lining up with what we've seen so far this season. And then also per, in percussion, we see, have seen the Blue Devils do well here, so it's not a surprise, uh, but, but still, they do get the win over the Blue Coats by two-tenths. All those numbers together um, form that music total, 28 uh, 425 for the Blue Devils, 28.15 for the Blue Coats, very tight, only about three tenths, a little less, um, in this music caption. So when we look at the overall score, really, that's all that it is. That's all the margin there is, and it's all this music stuff because visual and general effect cancel each other out. So overall scores, Blue Devils in 94.625. These scores just keep gaining. They're going to be at 95 before we know it. Blue Coats, they finish second at 94.35. Colts at an 81.45, Troopers at 76.95, and Music City at 74.2. Music City does gain on the Troopers here. So, uh, the big takeaway from Soaring Sounds in Centerville last night, the Blue Devils have now won two head-to-head, -head, uh, two consecutive head-to-heads over the Blue Coats. Now, maybe you want to argue this doesn't mean a whole lot because they aren't with everybody, as we'll see 
um, at championships or there wasn't the whole panel with like four music judges, four general effect judges. Um, but still Blue Devils winning this event, um, is, is not, is not meaningless. So, um, just keep your eyes open, I guess, to see if the Blue Devils can keep this up. And next time these scores will meet is this Friday in Allentown. Blue Coats now go off and do this Band of Excellence thing and the, um, the Pro Football Hall of Fame event that they're doing. So they have a few days, not necessarily off, but a few days of doing something else aside from the DCI tour schedule. Third show last night, DCI Hoosier Heartland in Plymouth, Indiana. Um, I said yesterday on the podcast, well, I'm not really sure that they'll get this one in because of the weather. Actually, the show with the weather problems was not this one. It was actually Centerville. They did have some rain moved through there at intermission, but of course it didn't affect the show at all, um, since, since, um, they did get the show done. So, um, D-Sad, Who's Your Heartland? A few battles we were looking at, um, that I mentioned yesterday, Spartans and Legends at the top, Southwind and 7th Regiment in the middle, and then Heatwave Raiders and Lace Centaurs, this open class finalist, uh, finalist bubble battle, if you want to call it that. So, general effects, uh, Spartans, they do best the Legends once again by 5 tenths, 30.3 to a, a Legends score of 29.8. Southwind in 3rd, a 28.4. 7th Regiment, a 28 even in 4th. Heatwave in 5th, a 25.2. And the Raiders in 6th, a 24.2. Lace Centaurs do pull kind of close, just 2 tenths off of the Raiders. So, those two closer than the uh, Raiders margin to Heatwave, which is a whole point in general effect. Moving over to visual, um, just a few points of interest, I guess you could say. Uh, the big thing in visual is down at the bottom, and then all, really from, because the top two are kind of set in visual, you see the Spartans really almost a point ahead of the Legends in that caption, so not a whole lot there. But from Southwind down to Lay Centaurs, it does get somewhat interesting. Um, Specifically, Southwind versus 7th Regiment, especially in Color Guard, you see 7th Regiment over Southwind there. Um, not enough to do anything to that overall visual total. Southwind still gets 3rd, 7th Regiment, and 4th. And then when we go down to 5 through 7 here, you see Heatwave, Raiders, like Centaurs. The visual battle between these three cores has been extremely interesting to watch over the uh, past few days of competition for these cores head to head. You see visual proficiency, Heatwave in 5th. By a tenth over the Raiders, Lay Centaurs farther back, eight tenths behind the Raiders. Then visual analysis, you have Lay Centaurs in fifth, Raiders in sixth, and Heatwave in seventh. And then Color Guard, Lay Centaurs above Heatwave, who are above the Raiders. So what does that mean for the overall visual numbers? That means Lay Centaurs in fifth, Raiders, or sorry, Heatwave in sixth, and Raiders in seventh. So very tight competition between those three, especially in this visual caption. I think it's something we'll be watching for this next week as these course um, open class tours do wrap up and they head to Marion, Indiana for championships a week from today. In the music caption at this one, um, we've we've seen the legends do uh, do better um, or at least do their best in this music caption, um, when we're looking at them against the Spartans, we haven't seen them really get to touch the Spartans too much in general effect or visual, but music they, they do get kind of close to. Not getting the overall music victory, but do get a, a win in percussion of 14.9 to a 14.6 for the Spartans. Spartans actually falling pretty close to Southwind in percussion, uh, Southwind coming within a tenth there. When we look at the bottom three battle, uh, well, first, Southwind, 7th Regiment, not a huge battle in the music caption here, so I'll kind of skip over them. But that bottom three, you've got Heatwave, Raiders, Lace Centaurs, Raiders over Heatwave in Brass, and that's really the only mixing up we see in music. Really just um, music um, going along the lines of how they finish at the at the show overall. So... Overall scores, Spartans is 76.15, Legends is 74.35, Southwind in third is 70.75, Seventh Regiment finishes fourth at 69.4, Heatwave in fifth is 62.05, 
Raiders in sixth, a 60.25, and the Lay Centaurs in seventh, a 58.85. Lay Centaurs are pulling close to the Raiders, but the Raiders are falling a little bit further behind Heat Wave. So, really, um, it's good for the Lay Centaurs that they're pulling closer, but since the Raiders are falling off a little bit right now, um, they're not being able to get as close to Heat Wave and that finalist, uh, finalist berth as maybe they would like. The final show last night was the DCI Shoreline Classic in Storm Lake, Iowa. Interesting competition um, from really two to four or five here, uh, depending on the caption. Looking at general effect first, I, you notice I didn't mention the first place score here, um, and that's gold because they are ahead of the of the pack and really everything. So, um, in general effect, a 29.9 for gold. Louisiana Stars, Best River City Rhythm in this caption, the 27.7 to a 27.6. Guardians in fourth at a 26.7. So, a big gap, though, between Louisiana Stars and River City Rhythm and the Guardians. Shadow in fifth at a 26.2, coming within five tenths of the Guardians, have a point. And the Colt Cadets in sixth at a 24.9. Over in the visual caption, things um, only, really the only thing I want to look at is visual analysis, and that's because stuff does get kind of interesting between River City Rhythm, Louisiana Stars Guardians. When we look at this, you've got River City Rhythm in second at 13.1, third goes to the Guardians at a 12.7, and Louisiana Stars in fourth at 12.6. That uh, visual analysis, really the mixing up between Guardians, Louisiana Stars there doesn't doesn't show too much in the overall visual scores. Um, they still do finish third and fourth. Um, Guardians not being able to jump Louisiana Stars in the visual caption, although they get that, that victory over the Louisiana Stars in visual analysis. When we look at all the visual numbers, you've got gold at a 22 even, River City Rhythm at 20.45, Louisiana Stars in third, Guardians in fourth, uh, Guardians just two tenths off there, Shadow in fifth an 18.6, and Colt Cadets in sixth a 17.45. And then, uh, finally, in music here, this is where it gets really interesting between all these scores, um, from River City Rhythm down to Shadow. Um, first in Brass, you've got Louisiana Stars at 14.1 in second, River City Rhythm in third at 13.9, Guardians in fourth at 13.6, and Shadow in fifth a 13.4. In music analysis, uh, you've got Louisiana Stars and Guardians. They both go ahead of River City Rhythm there. And you also see the Colt Cadets pull kind of close to Shadow there, just two tenths separating those two in music analysis. And then in percussion, uh, Golden first, River City Rhythm in second, Shadow jumping all the way up to third here at a 13.6, just a tenth behind River City Rhythm. Louisiana Stars in fourth, and the Guardians in fifth there, Colt Cadets in sixth. Overall music totals, you've got gold in first to the 22 even, second to the Louisiana Stars, a 20.6, River City Rhythm with a 20.45 in third, Guardians in fourth, a 20.15, so those three very close there. Shadow, since they do fall off the pace a little bit in music analysis, that does hurt their overall music score. They fall down to a 19.5 and Colt Cadets at an 18 even. Overall scores on the night in Storm Lake, Iowa, you have gold up at the top of 73.9, right where they need to be. I said, yeah, I gained those two points back that they had lost um, in their previous show. They do do that at a 73.9. River City Rhythm in second, a 68.5. Third place to the Louisiana Stars is 67.85. Guardians in fourth, a 66.2. Shadow in fifth, a 64.3. Pulling um, not closer to the Guardians than before, but still maintaining a reasonable distance between the two. And then the Colt Cadets in sixth, breaking 60 at a 60.35. So, uh, tonight, two shows. These uh, first up, Summer Music Games of Southwest Virginia and Salem, Virginia. We've got eight world-class scores here. Genesis, Pacific Crest, the Madison Scouts, the Academy, and Intermission, then the Crossmen, Blue Stars, Blue Knights, and Carolina Crown. Uh, what are we watching for? Crown can make it up to a 92 or 93 um, tonight. That would be big for them um, to 
stay over um, Cavaliers and the Boston Crusaders, since they're both kind of on their heels, especially the Cavaliers coming within just a few tenths of them the other night at Nightbeat. I'm trying to remember right now, because as I'm mentioning Crown and how we're just setting like a score goal for them, not necessarily a placement goal. Um, the last time these scores were like by themselves at a show um, without any extremely close competition, um, like last night we saw Blue Coats versus uh, Boss or Blue Coats versus Blue Devils, rather. Uh, we saw, um, like, Phantom versus the Mandarins. There's, like, close competition, but I'm trying to remember when the last time was that, like, Carolina Crown or the Boston Crusaders were all by themselves, and it has to be before Texas Tour at this point. Um, I know we had a few outliers there, like Blue Devils and Hattiesburg or um, some other cores, but really, these cores have all been going head-to-head -head numerous times over the past few days, and this is why this uh, this season's been going, I think, so quickly, but also so, um, so it's been so interesting also. So anyway, um, that's aside from the, uh, the, the point. So Crown get up to a 92 or 93 tonight. That's their goal. Blue Knights and Blue Stars, one of the most interesting battles, uh, one of the closest battles if you average all of the scores so far. Um, Blue Knights currently with that upper hand, but Blue Stars pulled, or actually Blue Knights pulling away from the Blue Stars, um, at, uh, on Sunday. Saturday they did pull kind of close, but Sunday Blue Knights pulled back away. Crossman there, they've got to keep, uh, keep, keep the gears moving. You got to get 84, 85, 86 tonight, uh, because Phantom, Phantom's coming. They're coming, I know I said earlier in the show, they're coming for the Mandarins, but... Before they can get to the man rooms, the crossmen are there. So, uh, crossmen got to get the gears moving forward tonight. And then you've also got uh, the Academy of Pacific Crest again. That was just three tenths last night. Very interesting battle. And then also Madison, Scouts, and Genesis, as I um, said at this one. Second show, Drum Corps in American Tradition in Annapolis, Maryland at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. Action packed lineup here. Um, no intermission. I like these shows where they just go straight through. So, starting at 645, Sound Sport performance by Sonus Brass Theater from Woodbridge, Virginia. Then the Welcome to National Anthem 710, open class performance by Encore from South Brunswick, New Jersey. Then we've got six world class cores here Seattle Cascades, Jersey Surf, Spirit of Atlanta, the Mandarins, the Cavaliers, and the Connects. What are we watching for the Cavaliers? Um, they they got up pretty close to Crown the other night. Can they continue that pattern kind of tonight, um, getting up to a 92 or 93? That'd be big for the Cavaliers. Um, and also the Mandarins and Cadets. Mandarins, obviously, they want to pull closer to the Cadets, but of course the Cadets, they want to pull away from the Mandarins. So um, we'll just have to see how, that, um, come, how they come out of tonight. Uh, the cadets did pull away from the Mandarins and actually were um, gaining on the Blue Stars um, as of this past weekend. So we'll have to see how how that shakes out tonight. And then also Spirit, um, people are kind of ruling them out of the finals conversation right now. And I think maybe deservingly so. I mean, their scores aren't necessarily at par with Phantom or Crossman or anybody else. So, um, if they, if they could just go out tonight and get an 85, maybe, uh, 84, 85, that'd be big for them, because they're making the score jumps, just everybody else is gaining a little bit quicker. And then we've also got Surf, um, and the Seattle Cascades, both of those scores, as we're coming up quickly on championships, both of those scores, obviously, their biggest goal is to make semifinals. I covered that with both of those scores in their, in my season preview podcast with them earlier, um, earlier this supper, and um, I said both these cores need to make some of my finals this year. Surf, they're kind of setting themselves up to do that. Cascades, they still got a little bit more work to do, um, so we'll just have to see how those two cores um, do factor out both tonight, but also going forward in the season. I'll be at this one in Annapolis. Um, definitely looking forward um, to some uh, great drum corps tonight at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. 
So thank you for watching the podcast. Just a few things. Make sure to visit my website, drumcorecentral.weebly.com, for all the latest updates from the ECI and the ECA summer tours. Scores, schedules, leaderboards, and more can all be found on my own personal website about all things drum corps. Make sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Drum Corps Geek, and subscribe to the Show Day podcast on YouTube, where this podcast and more will be posted. And finally, please leave your thoughts in the comments sections, questions, input comments, etc. would all be greatly appreciated. So thank you for watching the Show Day podcast for Tuesday, July 30th, 2019. Have a great rest of your day.